Everybody's Chris from Prepared Mind 101. Got something to show you today. I haven't done one of these in some time. Uh, sheath review. But uh, are you going to get that fire going? It's cold out here. So we got a... Uh... Val always has to be like on fire duty. That's her thing. She has the pyromaniac gene. That's what you are. You're a pyromaniac. I don't know what that means. It means somebody who obsessively starts fires. Like me. That's why you always want to light all the candles and everything. Anyway, getting off track here. So what we're going to look at today, it has been some time since I did a sheath review. I like to showcase my favorite sheath makers quite often, uh, but it's just, it's been a while. Uh, I try to only like pick knives that, you know, sometimes I really like the leather sheaths that they come with, but some of them are like just those pinnacle knives, those, those, those Jessica List ones, the ones that I, that I really, really like, and those get uh, kydexed. And pretty much for a good long time, Doug Wilson from Yellowhawk has been my top kydex guy. Now, that's not taken away from any of the other guys that I review, but let's just face it, Doug's, Doug does stuff that I really like. And the one that I just got back, like it's been a good eight, nine months since I had anything sheathed. So I just got back the Bark River uh, Bravo Taupe Recon, which was this one. Which I love this knife for a large primary knife. I, I remember in the in the review of this knife, like some people didn't get the harpoon shape. Well, oh well. But for a large primary knife that isn't one of my own, yeah, I like I like this one a freaking lot. CPM 3V, and they did uh, put some more. They they did get a, an extra batch of these up on DLT so I just checked and, and they do still have some of these so I'll put a link to these in the description box below but the sheath that he came up with is pretty awesome and it's got some new stuff to this as well and then what I'm going to do is show you a couple examples of some of the other ones that I have uh, to give you a, a wider look at his stuff so if you want if you desperately need uh, a sheath for that really awesome knife that you got don't go away All right, so I don't remember exactly the pattern. When we say kydex, that's like the generic term these days uh, for the different types of you know, multiple thermoplastics. It's like kydex is band-aid. You know, there are adhesive bandages, but we call them all band-aids. But this is, I forget, uh, it's a basket weave or something like that. I've got it on several of my knives. There's basically two patterns that I like the most that I keep getting over and over again. And I don't know what this new pattern is, but it's really nice. Good thick stuff too. Doug usually tries to go for the thick stuff. Attention to detail. It's just he's got the he's got the crispest, cleanest Kydex sheaths anywhere. And then uh, when he does he does the drop loop, he's using. I'm sure it's like some sort of genetically modified super bison leather type stuff. He always does it all fancy. But I like, this is like the style that I generally go with. I always go with a drop, a drop loop sheath. It's got to be able to swing at least a little bit. I always go with, I don't like a whole bunch of extra stuff on the sheath, but I do want to have a half inch ferro rod on it which we've got here. And then this is really interesting. This is something that he does on most of his stuff, but he always has the option of taking this and putting it on the front at like a 45-ish degree cross draw. 
and then it looks like I didn't even know these were a thing this is a new style of tech lock that he has and the way that it works it's just a lot easier like right here it's kind of like in the lock position it's not going anywhere slide that over it's unlocked push it comes down so it's just a lot a lot faster not that I'll probably ever use that because I never do but it's nice that I have that option on there yeah he, he's usually on top of any kind of new uh, attachment accessories so I'm, I'm really happy to have this knife back finally uh, I wanted to get out and use it some more because I really dug it once I did the review in the week leading up to it and I'm like yep yep I like this one enough this one is getting yellow hawked for sure so there is that it's the newest one now we don't generally quote kydex prices in these videos uh, when it comes to kydex prices they don't like us on YouTube to like give you solid quotes because it is it's a complete custom process and what you decide you want and how you want it built and how many options and all that stuff and the material you know that's it all factors in so it just doesn't <laughs> you got to talk to them you got to talk to them tell them exactly what you want and then they'll get you a quote all right so let me i brought some of the other ones out here that are my my big ones my my favorites that have uh, the yellow hawk sheaths just so you can kind of compare to this one so that's probably one of my fanciest yellow hawk sheaths but it's not the fanciest probably well this isn't even the fanciest but it's probably one of the most important ones because this is one of those knives that i have that is like absolutely positively never going to be sold or traded and you've seen this before but we're putting this all together and that is the uh, yellow hawk sheath that he did for the Dark Timber Honey Badger. So, this is one of, in my opinion, Pete's finest works. Absolutely treasure this knife. This knife is, doesn't matter how deep a hole I could end up in monetarily, this one would never get sold. So, there's that. Uh, also has a drop loop on this one, but in this case, uh, it's not on a ring, so it's not swinging. But the way he did it is this does have a ring, so you could possibly connect it to a clip or whatnot. And instead of the other tech lock that he used, uh, he, he used two of these uh, mini molly clips, which is really cool. And I've used this on a lot of different sheaths. Just the pattern is kind of like this uh, faux leather. It just looks absolutely phenomenal. So when it comes to like the certain knives, I mean, I don't have a bunch of them. You, people think that I have a bunch of them. But I don't have a bunch of them. I have to trade. I have to sell. I have to do things to keep the show rolling forward. Because uh, contrary to popular belief, Everyone does not just shower me with free stuff. So if it's not something that I absolutely positively cannot live without, sometimes I have to part with it in order to get new things. But some of them, I just know I like so much. And those are generally ones that I get uh, the Yellow Hawk sheaths for. Now the other ones, I have a couple more. This is where we get into the biased area. Of course, this is one of my favorite knives in the world to use when I'm out in the woods, and that's because I designed it. So it is exactly everything that I want it to be. And this is Doug's Jessmic CPM 3V. This is the this is the very first CPM 3V Jessmic. Still one of my favorite knives. But this is the Yellow Hawk sheath that he did for that. Some 
yellow. This has got the brown leather drop loop. So, absolutely incredible. So everything we've seen so far are like in the permanent, you know, keepers. Now this next one, I've got one more that I wanted to show. And it's, the reason I threw this one in here is I was, and I don't know why, but I was kind of sad to see this on Facebook the other day. Uh, my other top Kydex guy, Gary, C2G Fab, for, I don't know why, but, you know, he's basically closed the doors for at least the foreseeable future. So I don't know what's all going on there, but C2G Fab is now not an option. So I was like, crap. I mean, I was literally just thinking of him. Uh, a week ago for a knife that I just recently got and the, one of the biggest things that uh, that, I, that I like to go to Gary for was he did he made like the perfect bush bat sheath for me and it, inv it involved these Ulta clips uh, so it would fit inside your front pocket well Doug also has those clips and I had him do one for me a while back because this is like, this is another one of those, you know, J-listed knives. But this is the, the uh, Bravo 1 LT in crew wear. And this was just like, I, th I thought this would be a good idea to do it. This is like the biggest you could possibly go and comfortably use that front pocket sheath system. And you can, as long as you're not wearing, you know, skinny jeans, which, no, let's face it, no one's going to catch me wearing those. Um, but if you've got some decent outdoor pants on, then this actually works rather well. I like to put this one in go bags and things like that. So if I'm somewhere where I think I might decide to take a walk in the woods, but I'm not totally planning on it, I can at least have this and just shove this in my front pocket. So once it has this thing locked down on your front pocket, then you can just yank on the knife and put it back. It's a nice, nice way to do things. So when, you know, I've got the JX6 getting ready to drop again, and I believe the JX4 is coming back around. So that's two of my knives that work really, really well with that inside the pants, front pants pocket system. So if Gary's not making them, that kind of falls back on Doug then. I'm sure other people do it, and just probably any other Kydexer can do it. I mean, it's not rocket science. I can only go by you know, who I've used before. So again, as you can see, I, I like this basket weave pattern a lot, or that faux leather. And uh, those are just the ones that I brought out here with me. But these are bomb proof outstanding top-notch top tier amazing sheath systems and I haven't shown one in a while so now is a good time especially with Christmas coming up you know if if you are for some weird reason the wife of somebody that normally watches my channel and you're getting your husband a new knife and you want to get it Kydex too, you know, hit up Doug. Then you can extra special support. What are you laughing at? No, it's just so random. That is how Daddy does videos. Completely random. I'm so glad I'm learning this. Yeah, you want to be a YouTuber. You said I wanted to be a YouTuber. You used to want to be a YouTuber. <laughs> till, well, the stuff she watches would probably still make money. We don't. All those stuff she watches is just like hey, look at me I'm taking a bath in Doritos <laughs> so amazing that's what my brother watches oh, okay yeah excuses excuses <laughs> anyway back on task so I'm gonna put the link to Doug's uh, website Doug's Facebook page and all that stuff in the description box below now as a bonus bonus I finally got last minute I'm like you know what I gotta do this I gotta I, I gotta do it I was like I don't know why I gotta do it I just gotta do it I, I wanted to do it last time but I didn't this is a recent drop 
from uh, Bark River and there will be a a regular video on this you know maybe I'll film it Sunday if the uh, if the weather's okay because I want to get Will on this one but we're talking about the Kephart K-Bar's got one that is like almost identical replica of an actual Kephart so that's pretty freaking cool but Bark River's got a Kephart too and it is made of everybody's favorite magical steel CPM 3V and why do I think that's important? One is because Kepharts are slicers, cutters. Uh, this is where the bushcraft people uh, get their, their raccoon skit, skin hats all twisted up. They're like, no, this, use the knife for what it's meant to, for. It's not for, it's not for splitting wood. Okay, I agree with you. I mean, that is a thin knife. But if you're gonna have a knife and carry it in the woods and it's gonna be thin, wouldn't you also want that to be as strong as possible? Ergo, CPM 3V. Plus, 3V holds an edge for so long. So I've never actually personally had a Kephart. Because I'm just, a, you know, a rebel. <laughs> I'm like, if I do a Kephart, then I'm going to just... Then I, I don't know, I have to follow some bushcraft rules or something. And I don't like that. But it just kept calling to me. It just kept calling to me. And now that I got it, I'm like, wow. This is really nice. I mean, it doesn't look like anything fantastic. It's very plain. That's what cap parts are known for, being plain. But it's also very light. Why can I see my breath all of a sudden? It's strange. Did you turn the, did you turn the, the air down or something? But very lightweight. I love the handle. I mean, and because of its, you know, it's a full convex, it's 3V. I just give it like a couple quick swipes on the ceramic rod, and it's like I can cut space time. I can't show that on camera because if I do, it creates a, some sort of paradox and we'll all be in jeopardy. I'm just saying I can do it with this knife. So I am going, I want you to look forward to seeing a video on this here in the near future. But of course, because this is now, now we are in bushcrafty land, we have to wait for Will to be here too. That way it's official. So there is that. Um, but yeah, these are still available too uh, on DLT as are these Taupe Recons. I will uh, put some links to those in the description box below. And the other thing that's interesting, and this is probably going to be part of the uh, Black Friday sale, I'm guessing. But I asked Mike, I'm like, Mike, what's up with all these random customs on uh, DLT site? And apparently they recently had the grind in. And the way I understand it, Jason from DLT said, why don't you take all that leftover grind in stuff and just make a bunch of random custom bark rivers and we'll throw them up on the site so there's like a whole bunch of these random like it might be one it might be two but a lot of times it's ones that they're otherwise sold out on and there are some ones on there in fancy handles like the marauder which is one of my other favorite knives that is just like freaking amazing so if you didn't know that was on there, at least get on the website and check it out and see if there's something that you might want. You know, so, you know, tell the significant other, get me this for Christmas. And then I will get you uh, whatever she wants. I don't know. What do you think she wants? Who wants? Uh, the guy that's watching his wife. Do you hear the birds just shut up? No clue. It's weird out here. I think someone's mowing their lawn. No, it's, it's, it's just getting weird out here. Temperature's all weird. One minute I can see my breath, one minute I can't. Valerie can't get a, keep a freaking fire going for five minutes. It can't. There's like everything out here is wet. Thank you. Someone else said it. Everything out here is wet. But she did burn up all my quick start fire material, so there's that. Yay! 
All right, guys, so Chris from Prepare Mind 101, thanks for watching. Be sure to click like, share, and subscribe. Be sure to check all the links down below. Check out Yellowhawk, check out DLT, check out all that stuff. Uh, try not to get too uh, crazy uh, with Thanksgiving dinner because just because it's Thanksgiving does not mean you have to gorge yourself. You don't. So random. You don't. But people do. They think, oh, it's Thanksgiving, so I have to eat three times the amount of food that I would normally eat. And then they go into a food coma, and then everyone's fighting over the bathroom. What's a food coma? A food coma? That's when you eat too much food, and then you just lay on the couch, and you're like, ugh, I gotta watch TV. That's you. Yeah, well, that's just general. It has <laughs> nothing to do with food. All right, guys, see you next time.